Good morning. morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. I want to read the first 11 verses as we continue our study in the book of Ecclesiastes. (laughs) I said in my heart, Go now, I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure. And behold, this is also is vanity. I saw it, I said of laughter, it is mad and of mirth. What do with it? I saw it in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainteth my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all days of their life. I made me great works, I builded me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me great gardens, I'm sorry, gardens, orchards, and I planted trees, them, and all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and servants born in my house, also great possessions of great and small cattle above all. And there in Jerusalem before me, I gather me also silver and gold and a particular treasure of kings and the provinces. I get me men, singers and women, singers and delights and sons of men and musical instruments and that all of sorts. And so I was great, increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiceth in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked at all the works that my hands have wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of the spirit. And there was no prophet under the sun. Father, as we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the scriptures. We thank you for the truth that is in it. Help us, Holy Spirit, to apply what we're going to preach on this morning to our lives. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us this morning, Father, with the wisdom of God that is found in your instruction book, the Bible. Holy Spirit, be our teacher this morning. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. This morning's message is called, Looking for Life in All the Wrong Places. Mm -hmm. Looking for life in all the wrong places. There is an interesting article called Great Truths About Life Children Have Learned. And it reads, the best place to be when you're sad is in Grandpa's lap. When your mom is mad at your dad, don't let her brush your hair. (laughs) That's true. That's true. Never ask your three-year-old brother to hold a tomato. You can't trust dogs to watch your food. I can verify that one. Don't sneeze when someone is cutting your hair. Never had a dustbuster and a cat at the same time. With my dog, don't use your vacuum at the same time. No matter how hard you try, you can't baptize cats. (laughs) Children have a lot of wisdom, don't they? Solomon learned some great truths about life as well. But he had to learn them the hard way. Solomon spent his entire life looking for satisfaction. And he could not find it. Not in the things of the world. 
Solomon seemed to try everything under the sun as, in verses 1 through 11, didn't he? Under the sun, trying to find meaning to life. The more things he tried, the more he realized there was only a desert mirage. Let's look at some of the things Solomon tried as the king of Jerusalem. Number one, Solomon tried learning. He tried learning in verse number 13. He says, Then I saw the wisdom excel folly, as far light excel the darkness. He tried learning. Solomon tried education, thinking that it was the key to life. Some people think education is the key to life, amen? It's not. You can have all the education you want. That's not the key to life. Trust me, I've been there, done that. Now what? Right? That's Solomon's philosophy. Been there, done that, now what? You can get all the education you want. It won't make you happy. Amen? So big deal. I have a doctorate degree. Big deal. Doesn't make me happy. Got me in debt. Which is paid off, but didn't make me happy. Matter of fact, didn't he make me even smarter? The more I learned, the more I said, this is dumb. <laughs> Isn't it strange how education, people think education can change society and can change things. Has it? No. 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 Has not. Yeah, never will. But he found that it was also empty. If education is the answer, why are people struggling with alcohol? Why are people struggling with drugs and, and immorality? Learning is not the answer. If education was the answer, all this stuff would stop. Right, right. But it won't. Because man is born with a sinful nature yes. and loves it. Yeah. I don't care who you are this morning, you love your sin. We all do. That's why many people don't come to Christ, because they love their sin more than Him. And here's Jesus Christ dying on the cross, forgiving your sin. Yes. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we may partake the righteousness of God. Amen? Education is not the answer. He tried it and said, no, that's not working. And then in verses 1 through 3, Solomon tried laughter. He, he tried laughter. Solomon thought pleasure was the way to go. It is not the way to go. As a matter of fact, worldly pleasure only brings poverty. Did you know that? Look at Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 17. The Bible says, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. Yeah. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be what? Rich. Why? Because th those things take all your money. <coughs> they take all your money. Mm -hmm. It's sad that when man thinks the, the love of pleasure is where it's at. No. The more you love pleasure, the more money you spend, and the poorer you get. You see, worldly pleasure brings false security. Look at Isaiah. Look at Isaiah. Whoop, went the wrong way. Isaiah chapter 47. Isaiah chapter 47. I want you to notice verse 8 and 9. The Bible says, Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwelleth care carelessly, that saith in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, and one day the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and the great abundance of thy enchantments. Wow. When you, when you look at verse 8 and 9, you see you can have all the pleasures you want. But it doesn't bring security. 
I wish I could, I wish I could get through people's thick skulls. <laughs> you can have all the money you want. But remember the crash in 1929? Remember the crash we had in 19... I forget what it was, 80, something like 87. that? 87. 87? And there's one coming. Yeah. You might lose it all tomorrow. See, security is not money. It's nice to have it, don't get me wrong. I'm glad you do have it. But don't trust in that for security. Because you could lose it tomorrow. Worldly pleasure brings poverty, false security. And the big one, look at Luke chapter 8. Turn over there a minute. In Luke chapter 8, look at verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they heard, talking about the truth, the gospel, go forth, are choked with the cares and riches and the pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to what? It even affects you spiritually. Worldly pleasures is, a, is spiritual barrenness. Mm. Oh, you might have all the money in the world, but you're spiritually dead. You're without God in your life. That's why Jesus used the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. That rich man had everything. But when he died, he went to hell. <clears throat> Here is poor Lazarus, had nothing, and yet he's with God. Mm -hmm. Rich men can be saved. God uses born-again wealthy people. But those people, born-again believers, who have wealth, God can trust them with it. Can God trust you with your wealth this morning? Or is it all for you? Me, myself, and I. What if God told you this morning, I want that nice, big, fat savings account. I want, I want you to give that to the church. I want you to give that to a missionary. I want, would you do it? Don't say yes. Don't you dare say yes quickly. Would you do it? If the answer is no, then guess who's it for? It's for you and you only. Nothing wrong with wealth. But it will not give you pleasure. It will not make you happy. Show me a man that has got nothing but happy with Jesus. That's a happy person. Yeah. Wealth, worldly pleasure also brings you spiritual death according to 1 Timothy 5, 6. So he tried laughter. He tried everything. Laughter didn't make him happy. That's worldly pleasure. That's part of a worldly pleasure. Try and laugh, laugh things, you know. Laughter only, only lasts for a few minutes. Think, think of this this morning. When it comes to laughter, the first person that comes to my mind who was a funny man was Robin Williams. A funny guy in the beginning, and he got filthy as he got. Mm -hmm. But here's a man who had everything, made people laugh, had money, and yet he hung himself. He hung himself. Sad, isn't it? So he said, well, maybe I'll try amusement in verse number one. In our text. I'll try amusement. You can only imagine the palace that Solomon lived in. Probably looked something like we see in Las Vegas and Caesar's Palace, the big cities today. Big living, laughter. It was endless. When Solomon built something, he went first class. It was like living in Las Vegas around his palace. 
But look at Proverbs 14. Proverbs chapter 14, I want you to notice verse number 13. Even in laughter, the heart is what? Sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is what? You ever, you ever known people, they laugh and laugh and laugh, but you know inside they're miserable. They're miserable. They're not happy people. They, they think they are, but they're not. Ponder this this morning. The Epicurean life is not all it's cracked up to be this morning. It is a fruitful life with much toil. You can live that Epicurean life, but you're not going to be happy in the end. So he tried amusement. That didn't work. Then in verse 3 in our text, he tried living it up through alcohol. Well, maybe if I booze it up, that'll make me happy. That'll, that's what life's all about, amen? So he tried it. Built himself wine, uh, vineyards and drank. So I'll try that. You know what's interesting when you read that verse, when you try it alcohol? Isn't this the man who wrote in the book of Proverbs and what he said about living up through alcohol? He, ought to, he should have taken his own advice. Look at Proverbs chapter 23. Solomon wrote Proverbs. Solomon said in verse, chapter 23, in verse number 29, Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contention? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without a cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is what? Red when it giveth his color in a cup when it is moved itself aright. Red moves, let's talk about fermentation there. And babbling and redness of eyes. Oh my goodness gracious. And then verse 32. At last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thy eyes shall behold strange woman. Thy heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea. Or he hath lied upon the top of a mass. They have stricken me. Thou shalt say I was not sick. They were beating me and I felt it not. When I shall awake, I will seek yet. What? Again? That's a drunkard's life. That's what alcohol does to a person. Then in chapter 20, look at chapter 20 in verse number 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not what? No. Wise. You see, alcohol destroys homes, does it not? Alcohol destroys homes. Alcohol destroys one's health. Alcohol destroys happiness. Life becomes a long stupor lived from one drink to the next. You call that living? I'm so glad when God saved me, he took the alcohol away from me. Because my whole family are alcoholics. My father was. My mother was. Everybody was. Then if I God hadn't saved me, I would have gone down the same route. That's all I knew. That's why I stay away from it. Well, as a pastor, I have to. A pastor can't drink. But it's not wise to drink at all. Stay away from it. Another part of Proverbs says that you're not even to take it. You're not to drink it at all. So he said, well, I'm going to, he had the best vineyards in Jerusalem. So he tried alcohol. Where did it get him? Nowhere. He still wasn't happy. I don't miss those days at all. 
What about you? The passions that was that was me as a sailor, man. Just get up there and drink and have fun, riot and get in trouble. Wake up the next morning. There were days I was in the bunk. I didn't know how I got there. Nice life. If you can, stay away from it. Especially if you're weak. Today, my heart goes out to teenagers yeah. your age. Because that seems like, you know, alcohol, drugs, party life. That's what they're being taught. That's what you know, their friends are doing. Be different. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Trust me, us old adults, listen to us. We got wisdom. We've been there. Yes. It only causes heartache and pain. That's, right. That's, right. That's all it does. See, it lasts for a while. You might think it gives you pleasure, but it doesn't. And some of the stuff that I, I reap today is because of what I reaped in my unsaved days. So he tried it. Didn't work. He tried learning. That didn't work. That didn't make him happy. He tried laughter. That didn't make him happy. He tried alcohol. That didn't make him happy. So Solomon tried labor. In verses 4 through 6 in our text, he tries labor. You see, when learning and laughter failed, Solomon tried labor. He built what? Houses. He planted vineyards, gardens, orchards. He made pools to water them. When you study the history of Jerusalem during his time, he had magnificent gardens. Best in the world. Houses galore. So he tried labor. Solomon was one of the, one of the greatest builders of his era. He thought maybe l leaving behind something that Lasted would bring satisfaction, but in the end, he was still empty. Mm -hmm. You can have all the buildings you want. You can labor to your heart's content, but it will not make you happy. So he says, well, that didn't work. He says, ah, I know what I'll do now. I'll try luxury. I'll try luxury. Verses 7 through 11 talks about that. Mm -hmm. You see, when learning and alcohol and laughter and labor fail, now he tries luxury. Surely the way to live is living in style. Boy, he lived in style. Solomon, mm -hmm. though, though perhaps wealth was the thing he should pursue. So he pursues wealth. In that time, he was the richest man in the world. But, but learn something this morning, people. The perils of wealth, luxury, it inclines to forget God. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 13 and 14. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiplied, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, watch this, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord yeah. thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt right. from the house of bondage. Don't you find it strange this morning that when people don't have, oh, Lord, please give me this, give, and, and, you know, to make ends meet, and, get, and then you get a little bit more, and then you get a little bit more, and all of a sudden you, you gain yourself well, and where's God in all this? You've forgotten him. That's what wealth does. The mind changes. The mindset is on wealth instead of God. It'll do it every time. It inclines to forget God. 
Psalm 6710, you don't have to turn there. Riches promotes greed. The more you get, the more you want. Then you're never satisfied. Isn't that sad? Never satisfied. You've got to have more, 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 more. You think it makes you happy, but it doesn't. Proverbs chapter 28. Turn over there a minute. Proverbs chapter 28 in verse number 20. A faithful man shall avow with blessing, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be what? Innocent. Not be what? Innocent. Innocent. See, wealth endangers integrity. It really does. It'll show you your true character. And the problem with getting wealth is that you'll ruin your integrity to get it. Matthew 19, 23 says, A rich man shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Mark chapter 4, verse 19, Wealth, riches, results in a barrenness life. In 1 Timothy 6, 9, Riches subjects people to power, powerful temptations. You will do things you would never do because you have the money to do it. Solomon tried luxury, but still, what? He was empty. He was not a happy man. Wealth isn't the answer, people. I was gassing up my car. Day before yesterday. I said, what's all these long lines? Mm -hmm. The mega bucks. What is it, 600 Something million dollars. People buying tickets. I'm thinking, how sad. You think that's going to make your life happier? It won't. Now, don't misunderstand me. It might make you happy for a while. But then, eventually, it'll, you'll end up being unhappy. He tried everything, didn't he, in the scriptures, Solomon? Everything. Yet, all was what? Vanity. Everybody knows who Ernest Hemingway was. Don't you remember Ernest Hemingway? Was a man who truly lived in luxury. He was a very successful man of the 20th century. He filled many books with reflections of his worldwide adventures. He went all over the place. He was shipping, uh, sipping champagne in Paris, hunting grizzly bears in Alaska, watching bullfights in Spain, fishing for tarpon in Florida. He lived the fullest of life most imaginable under the sun. Yet listen to his dying words. Matter of fact, he took his own life. He committed suicide. In his suicide note, read, quote, Life is just one damn thing after another. How sad. Solomon was looking for life in all the wrong places this morning. He still was unable to find the meaning to life. My question this morning is, what about you? Come to Christ this morning and you will find the real meaning of life. Amen? Amen. Amen? Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. 
In Colossians chapter 3, verse 4, I love this verse. When Christ, who is our, what's the next word? Life. life. See, Christ is our life. Not your money, not your luxury, not, not laughter, not all of these things in the world. Christ is our life. I love that. Shall appear, then ye also shall appear with him in glory. Is Christ in your life this morning? Look at John chapter 10. In John chapter 10. In verse number 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. See, the reason I'm happy this morning because Jesus is my life. Amen. And the reason why we have many in our church members that have cancer, that many have physical problems, and they're smiling, and they're enjoying still their life. Why? Because Christ is their life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what I have liver cancer? Big deal. It's only the body. My life is wrapped up in who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. That's all I care about. I'll do the things on earth that I have to do. But... It's not gonna, I'm not going around going, mm, 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 you know, well, you know, God is mean. That's not fair. I'm not going to do that. Jesus has been so good to me all, all of my born again days. Amen? Amen. Well, I mean, I'm going to serve him whether things are good or whether things are bad because I can do all things through Christ who what strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Amen? It's a joyous time. Yes, it is. As I tell people and the doctors and all of them, what's What's the worst that can happen? I get to meet Jesus. Amen. If it doesn't work out, I don't get the liver transplant. I meet Jesus. Family won't like it too much. You know, they're going to be sad. And <laughs> Kathy probably going, yes, free at last. Free at last. <laughs> yeah. But uh, listen, it's all about him. Life more abundantly. Amen. Do you want abundant life? Do you want security? Do you want peace? Do you want joy? It's in Jesus Christ and Him alone. Yes. See, all these things I talked about this morning, they're, they're worldly things. And, and sorry to tell you, you can't take it with you. One last verse. Look at 1 John. First John chapter 5, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life. I like that. And he that hath not the Son of God. See, you're not living. You have no life. You're just existing to die. That's no way to live. How many people are going to die today without knowing Jesus? And they died just, they were existing just to die. The God who gives life, don't you think He wants you to have more than that? He wants you to have a life with Him that's secure. You'll have eternal life. No. Did God say when he saved you that it's better roses? No. You see, he, he saves your soul and spirit. Spirit part of you. The body's always going to decay. You're always going to have problems with the body. But bless God, that's spirit. That's life. Do you have it? Are you content? If you don't, as we give the invitation, come. Don't be afraid. Many in this room will come forward.
People aren't going to laugh at you. That's what, you know what they're going to do? Yes. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're not going to say, don't you dare to go down that aisle. <laughs> but you know who puts all that in your mind? Satan. Satan. He'll, he'll, put in, he'll fill your mind in, in a, in a, in a five-minute invitation with all kinds of stuff. Don't go, don't go, don't go. I say, denounce him this morning. Amen. If you want real life, Amen. come forward. Amen. Father, thank you. Solomon was a man who had everything, but he was miserable. But we'll see at the end of the book what, where his true faith lies. But if there's someone here today, Father, that's not saved, I beg you, Holy Spirit, prick their hearts. May they come forward and be free from the slavery of Satan and the worldliness that he provides them. And they can find peace with God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.